In this video, we're going to use relational rods to show the conceptual idea of what it means to divide by decimals. But before we divide by decimals, we'll go over the idea of what division is using relational rods as well. So the first thing I'd like you to do is take one of each color of the relational rods and organize them in a way that makes sense to you. Pause the video before you move forward to see the answer. Now there are many ways to arrange these rods. The way that we're going to focus on is by arranging them in order of size. Once we have them arranged in order of size, if I tell you that the white rod is worth one, my question is what are all the other rods worth? Take a second and pause the video to come up with your answer. If the right rod is worth one, then we would expect these rods to all be growing by a value of one each time. So two, three, four, all the way up to the orange rod representing 10. Now that we have an idea what the rods are worth, let's use these rods to define what division is. And so the first question comes, how would you use these rods to represent what 10 divided by two is? Now, if you don't have rods, you can use electronic rods using the Mathies app. The link is in the description. So one way to represent 10 divided by two is to take the 10 rod and divide it into two equal size pieces. So another way that we can answer the question is by asking a slightly different question. That is, how big are the pieces if you divide the 10 into two evenly sized groups? In this case, there are five apiece. A second way that we can consider division is by taking a rod of size 10 and seeing how many pieces of size 2 fit in it. So a similar question that we could ask here is, how many pieces of size 2 will fit into 10? And the answer is five. So either of these representation both give us the answer 10 divided by 2 equals 5. Now we'll keep those in mind as we move into dividing by decimals. So consider our rods again. We've already arranged them in order of size. And this time, let's ask a slightly different question. If the white rod is 0 0.1, what are the other rods worth? Pause the video and write down your answers. So if the first rod, the white one, is worth 0 0.1, the second rod is double that size, and so 0 0.2, and they go up by 0 0.1 each time, all the way till the orange rod is a value of 1.0. So now that we're using decimals to represent these rods, let's do some decimal division questions. So here are some decimal division questions, and we want to use the decimal version of the relational rods to represent these divisions. So if we look back to our previous representations, when we asked the question, what is 10 divided by two, we could re-ask that question as how big are the pieces if you divide 10 into two evenly sized groups, or how many pieces of size two will fit into 10? Both those gave an answer of five. However, if we change our question to what is one divided by 0 0.2, those two questions change to how big are the pieces if you divide one into 0 0.2 evenly sized groups, or how many pieces of size 0 0.2 will fit into 1. The first question doesn't make that much sense. That is, what is 0 0.2 evenly sized groups? So for our purposes, we're going to focus on the second question. That is, how many pieces of size 0 0.2 will fit into 1? So to represent our decimal rods, we're going to turn from our white rod representing 1 to our white rod representing 0 0.1. And so if we want to do 1 divided by 0 0.2, we're going to use the rod of length 1 now. And the representation we're going to use is by taking rods of size 0 0.2 and asking how many of those fit into our rod of length 1. And so you can see that five rods of length 0 0.2 fit into the rod of 1.0. So what about two divided by 0 0.4? So let's first make 
a rod of length 2 out of 2 of these length 1, and we're dividing by 0 0.4, we're, so we're going to see how many rods of length 0 0.4 fit inside 2.0. So you can see that five rods of length 0 0.4 fit into 2.0. Now if we look at three divided by 0 0.3, we want a length of three, and we'd want to divide that by 0 0.3. So how many rods of length 0 0.3 fit inside 3.0? So you can see that there are 10 pieces of size 0 0.3 that fit into three. What about four divided by 0 0.5? First we need, something of size 4. And we want to divide that by 0 0.5, so how many pieces of size 0 0.5 fit into 0 0.4? And you can see that 8 pieces of size 0 0.5 fit into 4. Let's do one more. 4 divided by 0 0.8, so we want a length of 4, and we want to divide by 0 0.8. And so, when you have a length of 4 and you divide it by 0 0.8, there are 5 pieces of 0 0.8 length that fit inside. What if the rods that we're dividing are not whole numbers? So let's think about 1.2 divided by 0 0.6. First we need something of length 1.2, and we can build that from a rod of length 1 and a rod of length 0 0.2. Next, we want to ask how many pieces of size 0 0.6 will fit inside. You can see that two pieces of size 0 0.6 fit inside 0 0.2. If we ask the same question, what is 3.2 divided by 0 0.8, we need to build a rod of size 3.2. That's three rods of length 1 and another rod of length 2. That's our 3.2. And we're asking ourselves how many rods of size 0 0.8 fit inside there. And you can see that four rods of size 0 0.8 fit inside a rod of length 3.2. So let's take these ideas and try to summarize them. And ask this question. Here are the seven questions that we just did. My question, before you move on, is to think about what other seven questions could you ask that would give you the same answers that we got for these questions. Pause the video before you see the answer. It turns out the answer lies in how we started originally. Originally, we used rods where the white rod was a length 1. Notice that nothing changed besides the decimals turning into whole numbers. So whether we use the white rod as length 1 or of length 0 0.1, it turns out the representations represent questions that will have the same answers. That means that 1 divided by 0 0.2 is the same as 10 divided by 2, 2 divided by 0 0.4 is divided by 20 divided by 4, and so on until we get to 3.2 divided by 0 0.8 is the same as 32 divided by 8. And so if you're dividing by decimals, turning your question into a more friendly question may be the way to help you understand where the answer comes from. Because it may not be obvious why when you divide by a decimal number, you may get a whole number as the answer. Using these ideas, determine the answers of these. Pause the video to get your own answers before you see ours. Now, it would be hard to use the app to represent these as the numbers get a little bit big. If you had regular relational rods on your desks, you might be able to represent some of these if you had enough rods. But why not use similar questions that will have the same answer? So what question could we ask that is similar to 4.8 divided by 0 0.4 that will have the same answer? In this case, that's 48 divided by 4, and that has an answer of 12. Similarly, 7.2 divided by 0 0.8 can be represented by a similar question, 72 divided by 8, and that has an answer of 9. Hopefully, this video will help you understand why dividing by a decimal is very much the same as dividing by whole numbers and that there are similar questions that you can use to develop the same answer.